Welcome to How to Deliver a Speech About Yourself. In case we haven't had the pleasure of meeting, I'm Patricia Fripp, Hall of Fame keynote speaker, executive speech coach, and sales presentation skills trainer. This is part of our 20-minute webinar series, which means we will take any of your questions after in email. If you are a successful business professional, the chances are, whether it's internally for your company or perhaps because you're successful to a community group, you will have to talk about yourself and your success. And most people feel very nervous about doing that because we're programmed from our mother telling us to not show off. And there is one major secret. And once you realize this, talking about yourself is very easy. So what we will do in this session is just look at how you would structure your presentation based on this one secret. So let's go to the PowerPoint where you have a very simple diagram and we can walk through it with a couple of specific examples. So welcome to, of course, how to deliver a speech about yourself because if you're successful and make big bucks, they will want to hear. And if not, we can parlay it so you can make big bucks. Now, perhaps you're familiar with the FRIP speech structure. And what we're gonna do is organize this around the key issue, which is none of us are successful alone. We give credit for the influencers, the models, the, the, those who guided us through our career. And if you look at your presentation, your life story, as if it were a movie, act one, act two, act three. You might look at when you were young, when you were maturing, starting your career, and then when you actually had accomplished success. You want the opening story. Now, if this were a movie and having taken many movie writing and screenwriting classes, the opening scene of a movie is called the flavor scene. And your presentation is going to start with one scene from your life. And then we might go back to act one, act two, act three. For example, I was helping a very successful executive. He was a multimillionaire and he was head of this. Uh, it was a, a group of realtors who came together in a rather like a franchise situation. And he was giving a speech and everyone knew he was a multimillionaire. And his opening was... I never met my mother and I didn't meet my father until I was 14 years old. I was raised by my grandmother and life was perfect. So you see, this was the opening scene and he talked about act one. You know, who is your first hero? It might be a family member, it might be a friend. In this case, his first hero was his grandmother and he talked about the influences and the advice that she gave and then she died when he was 40. And that's when he went to live with his family his father, he has step brothers and sisters he didn't know existed. And then the second act of his life was when he was 20, he was a milkman. And he said, I was sitting, having breakfast at eight in the morning, looking down through the window of everyone driving to work. And I felt very on top of the world and quite superior. I had done my work. I had the rest of the day to myself. And in the business where he worked, they brought in a business consultant. And the business consultant looked at my client and realized he has great potential. He's far too smart and has enough initiative. He can do better. And he guided him through his career. And that was 
Then he went into business for himself and his first act three, his third influence was his, what he considered his adopted grandfather, who was really a mentor who helped guide him through his career. So, of course, within this presentation, you've got the advice that you have learned that made you the success. So it was the advice and it was the other people. And you certainly took action on it, which would be what you would certainly encourage the audience to do at the end. Now, another client worked in a high tech firm. And we were meeting to go over one presentation and she said, forget that presentation. I'm going for an interview for a job this afternoon. And this is, she was really coming in from another division and the person she was up against had been in that division and was probably the logical person to take over. And she said, I want you to help me with the interview. And I said, well, what, what are they going to ask you? And she said, they're going to ask me about my life and experience. And she had been very successful. She didn't quite know how to talk about it in the context of a job interview. And I said, well, obviously you want to, you want to do well. Tell me about your life. And when she did, it was so obvious to me. Act one for her. Her first hero was in her family. It was her mother. Act two, her second hero, was actually at school a really good counsellor who helped her test for where her attributes and her real talents were and to get the education she needed. And the third influence was actually a boss who became her mentor. It was a boss who really gave a lot of time to her about where she wanted to go, how she would strategize her career, what she would need to learn, what people she would have to meet, and what areas would she have to excel in to be able to do that. So these were the people. Now, the opening scene for her, she said she was 10 years old, sitting at the table in the kitchen with her mother who was 32 years old. Her father, who was 38, very healthy, had just dropped dead when he was out jogging. And her mother said, this will never happen to you. You will never be in a position that you have to support a family and no career. And it was a wonderful story because her mother had four children she had never worked outside the home, but it was what she did, but the encouragement and the modeling. Now, it was very happy. She went back to school and eventually got very well established, but you can imagine it was very, very hard. And then the second one, talking about this counselor, especially realizing she didn't have a father influence, she was getting good coaching and mentoring from her mother. But, but he, he realized that her future was in business. And then, of course, her third boss. So these all had great stories and advice. And the company that she worked for, she did get the job. They, their culture is whenever they have a new manager or a new executive, they always have to tell their life story and their, their timeline. And, and so therefore the presentation that got her the job would certainly also be the presentation that she would deliver when she was uh, introduced to her team and the company in this new position. So even though it's a conversation, you still design it the same way as if it were a movie. So that is the real secret. Now, here's a part of this that's very important. And that is you give the best lines to your characters. Because if you've listened to any of the formats, the, the webinars that we give on stories, stories about people, you have to give them a backstory and you have to deliver the advice to you in your story as you're delivering it to 
the audience. So it was her mother who said, you are never going to be in this position. And the actual advice that her counselor and her mental boss gave her deliver what they actually said. I was helping a very well-known celebrity athlete. And same situation, deliver the format as it were a screenplay. So I asked him what was the, the, the most, I said, what is the most exhilarating moment of your life? And I, in fact, I want you to deliver those words. It was the most exhilarating moment of my life. And was it the first time you won this great honor? And he said, no, it was the second time. Now, for me, this immediately was more interesting because this was not a story of how to be a success. This was a story of how to be a build your way to success, then lose it all and fight your way back. So act one, and I don't want to tell you who this was because it's a very famous person, but act one was after this exhilarating moment, which was the second time he won this great award, he won this specific race. Act one was how he got into the sport and how at age 20, he married his childhood sweetheart and went off to Europe with this sport was more popular. Act two was how he got ready and won the award for the first time. He won this particular race. And then he went out and got shot accidentally uh, when he was hunting. So the third and most exciting act was how he fought his way back. And at one point, all the press was saying, Oh, he's never going to do it. He was a had been, and he called his wife and said, maybe I should quit. And she said, sweetheart, you do what you like. You do what you like. However, I didn't marry a quitter. So you understand it's his wife that had the best line in that scene. So when you are putting together your speech about you, put it together in acts, Look at the mentors and people who helped you. Deliver the dialogue as they gave the advice to you. And think of these as scenes, the different scenes in that segment of your life. So, for example, with our sports celebrity, it started out when it was 14 and how he really got to be successful and then how he went off. To Europe. Act two was how he got training, the certain races he won until the final one, and then when he got shot. That was in a movie, it would be the second act climax. And then, of course, the, the really exciting part of fighting his way back. It was a great speech. So I hope that advice makes it easier for you the next time you have to give a speech about yourself. Now, obviously, this is one, one major idea and, and structure it in a way that it works and you can repeat it. All learning requires repetition and reinforcement, so we hope you might watch this again from the replay link. However, if you would like any help, we have a way that we can help you. So one, certainly any questions from the webinar, please feel free to send me an email, pfrip at frip.com. And we're going to encourage you to take a trial and perhaps subscribe to my interactive FRIP virtual training, which will teach you how to be a great speaker easily, conveniently, and quickly, and very cost effectively. If you would like a personal demo of it, just go to send an email to paul at frip.com. Paul at frip.com. Questions, pfrip at frip.com. And what you will find, you can take a trial and Paul can show you how to do it. You just go into FRIP VT 
take a trial and just from subscribing to our webinar series and being part of our community, we're very happy to give you a 20% discount. Use FRIP in your coupon code. This is the most inexpensive way you can learn to be the speaker you were designed to be. We certainly hope that you enjoyed this webinar. If you have some questions, send them to me. If you have any questions about who would be your heroes, feel free to send them to me and we can answer them and start a dialogue that way. So take your trial, a FRIP, a virtual training, or get a demo. And remember, you have a fascinating story. We all have a made-for-television movie or perhaps a Hollywood blockbuster inside of us. So an inciting incident is the is the time of which you know you the drama happens. You have an opening scene. You are going to look at your life, the beginning, the intermediate, and towards the end when you are the success. And within those, they are scenes and your characters speak. Thank you for subscribing to our webinar. Remember me, Patricia Fripp. And much more importantly than remembering me, remember what FRIP stands for. Frequently reinforce ideas that are productive and profitable. Repetition and reinforcement is how you learn. See you next time.